couldn't go to sleep without putting some lines down. And I actually wrote it like a poem. And I left it like that. I didn't go back to it. But my mind was going back to it, telling me I'm going to make a book out of that story. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. My name is Rick Nusky and do I have somebody very special on the line today? I'm speaking with uh, author, trainer and teacher Adiola Oyokula. Welcome to the show Adiola. Thank you so much Rick. Absolutely. I'm so happy to be here. It's a pleasure mm -hmm. to have you here. Now we're going to be obviously talking about your reasons for writing, uh, writing and publishing books and the journey writing has taken you on and the benefits writing delivers to your audience and about your latest release, Let's Go Shopping. But before we do any of that, Adiola, it's um, you know almost customary for us to spend a few moments talking about your life's journey. So tell us a little bit about firstly where you're calling in from today. Okay, so I'm calling in from um, Maryland. I live in DC, my family resides in Maryland. So today I uh, with my family, I'm uh, calling from Capitol Heights, Maryland. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, has that, been, um, has that been where you've lived uh, all your life? Yeah, yeah, I, no, I was born in Nigeria. I came to the United States about uh, 13 years ago, a little about 13 years ago. And um, I started off as a teacher in Nigeria and I continued as a teacher here as well, but with uh, younger children. Fantastic. We'll talk about that at some length in a moment, Adiola, but I'd love to uh, talk a little bit about um, landmarks where you live. What do you love about the place you're living in now? Oh, it's a quiet neighborhood. Um, my neighbors are friendly. Uh, I just like it because my family likes it. My children love it. They, they are able to go out when it's not... Um, when the weather is permitting, they're able mm -hmm. to play with friends in the neighborhood. Yep. And uh, yeah, I just I just like, you know, coming to a quiet place where I can relax and I'm happy staying here. Now tell us a little bit about growing up. What do you remember as a child? What, what are some fond uh, childhood memories you could share with us? Oh, I have fond memories with my siblings. Uh, I remember my mom uh, she would take us out to fun places like the park, like the zoo. We had picnics together. Uh, there was some um, long vacation that I had with uh, my cousins. I remember that as well. Uh, and I also, I also remember that my daddy really liked us to be at home, like when we were not in school. <laughs> I would say, okay, I have five children. You can play with yourselves. I have a big house. <laughs> do whatever you like. So he gave us the freedom to play. We would play, jump around, and do whatever. He, you know, you liked us being around him, you know, in yeah. the house most of the time. So these are some of the fun things. I also remember my mom, you know, making my hair look beautiful, yeah. buying us clothes uh, during festive seasons, taking us to the hairdresser to make our hair look, you know, a certain way when it's um, our birthdays or, you know, a festive season. And, you know, I remember some of those birthdays. I actually remember two... Um, I have a two-year-old picture where I had the picture with my cake. I still remember that picture, <laughs> you know, a black and white picture. So this is some things, and I'm looking at my own children today. I'll be like, oh, I remember my mom did this, <laughs> you know, when I was younger. And, you know, that those memories come as I do repeat the same things with my children. So I, yes. I, I had a fun do it. That's excellent. Thank you so very much for sharing some insights there. Now, I wonder, um, you've talked about your parents being um, important to your formative stages in your life earlier on. Have there been other people that have surrounded you as you've grown uh, into the woman you, you are today that have helped you along the way? Mm, I'm not too many people, but I can remember my um, older siblings making impressions on my life. A few things, a few skills I have today, I learned from my older sister. Mm -hmm. I'm able to make my uh, daughters hear because I learned from my mom, but I learned more from my older sister. Yes. I'm able to make some pastries that I learned from her. Uh, I'm also able to like, you know, do a few stitches here and there. I learned from my mom, I learned from my sister. 
Uh, I didn't really live with um, too many people. I grew up with a, uh, in a nuclear family. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, actually, I know my cousins, but I didn't really spend too much time with them. Yeah. Of with my family. Then I remember a few things. Um, I remember some of my teachers. Um, when, you know, in Nigeria, we had a system where we say we had the primary school, we mm -hmm. had the secondary school. Mm -hmm. And when I was in primary five, my teacher made an impression on me. Um, I am a very quiet, reserved person. Mm -hmm. So I never really thought that uh, anybody would notice me, you know. And then there's a culture in my school when you have um, when you take the first, second, or third position, we get uh, gifts at the end of the school year. Right. Then you pick out student for like a good behavior, for neatness. You know, it's some things they Those call things. up and they yep. give. Yes. So that year, I didn't know the teacher. You know, the teacher really noticed me. And my mom came for the uh, parent teacher conference. He told her I was going to give me a gift. And told my mom not to let me know he wanted it to be a surprise <laughs> and she didn't tell me wow. so it was the big events came and they shouted out my name for good behavior i was like was me? that my name me? <laughs> was that my name you know <laughs> so at the end of it all he came and he told me a lot of things he had noticed about me and you know that stayed with me up to and i know it's going to stay with me even beyond today because yes. i remember that you know me being a quiet person, I never thought anybody was taking notes of what I was doing. So of course. that tells me that it, it pays to be good. It pays to, you know, do what you, you're doing, whether people are looking at you or not. But I learned that people are usually looking at you. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing good things, you are able to get, um, you know, rewarded for it. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I'm loving this call now. I'm wondering, as a busy parent, do you have much time for hobbies and some personal time to do the things you love? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> like, um, yes, I like uh, watching movies. I like reading books. But the thing I don't really have much time to do is I don't really have too much time to read books. Right. Uh, but I still read books. Not as much as I would have loved to because from work to being a mom and all of that by the time i pick a book before i finish two pages <laughs> i'm i'm gone i'm those two. <laughs> you know yes but i do um have a lot of fun time with my family mm -hmm. you know and they 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 make me happy like my when i told my sons this evening that okay i'm having him i'm being interviewed they were like okay are you going to talk about us are you going to say the things you do about us you know because there's no way I will talk about myself that I will not talk about my family. They are my life. They are always there. So of course. coming home every day, seeing them, you know, talking with them, they inspire me. They, they, they keep me relaxed, you know, listening to their jokes. And, you know, all of those are part of what I call as, uh, they are part of my leisure. So of course. I still believe that I have, I have a good time when I'm not working. So they, to me, to me, family is the most important thing beyond money, beyond skills, beyond fame. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Would I you agree that, that uh, your family is more important than money, fame, exposure? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And a lot of time I will not do some things or some work. I will, you know, overlook, I will pick my family over work any time, any day. I, yeah. yeah, I do it most times. Fantastic. You know, yeah. Now, now, Adiola, you talked about your love for reading books and not having much time for it. Even though you're a prolific author, and we're going to be talking about that and all of your work that you've uh, created thus far. Do you like audio books? Is that an option for you? Yes, I actually like audio books. Mm -hmm. I also read, uh, you know, um, uh, prints. But uh, the thing is, the audio books have always helped me most times to get into reading, like let's say I find myself in a, uh, in a waiting room somewhere, maybe yeah. at the doctor's or somewhere, you know, and maybe I didn't even have a print book. I can always go into my, you know, Kindle and read some books. So yes, I do like ebooks. Now tell us a little bit about, I guess, uh, um, the, the styles of writing, but uh, in, I guess we should go into that in a moment, but you've had a, a, a career uh, with uh, teaching children. Were you able to share with us what that was about and how you got into that wonderful field okay so 
that's a very interesting story because my daughter actually got me into this. <laughs> uh, when I came to the U.S. and, you know, it's like starting all over again. And I was trying to, you know, thinking about what am I going to do? You know, I started looking for, um, you know, jobs. And I was looking for um, a, a child care center to keep my daughter. My daughter was like six months, you know. I was looking for where to, you know, uh, uh, a child care center for her. So when I got there, they said there was this interview I could do and I could get, you know, um, uh, subsidy from the government because I didn't have a job. I couldn't make uh, payments. So when I got there and I told the lady, I'm looking for a job, she said, well, we cannot, um, you will not be approved for subsidy because you are not in school, you do not have a job yet. And you're just telling us by word of mouth that you're searching for a job. How are we going to do this? So I said, okay, do you have any uh, resource you can give me that can help me to get something? Mm. And she told me to go to a job training program. And uh, okay, with the job training program, I'll get paperwork I could give to her. And that will help me, you know, um, put my child in yeah. a daycare center. So I did that. I enrolled. It was a two-week program. And there, and then they were teaching me how to um, make my resume look a lot uh, brighter than what yep. it was. Yep. And they were asking me about, you know, what my experience is. So with all the questions I answered, everything that the man could um, really uh, advise me to do was to go for childcare. So I set up my resume and I was like, okay, do I really want to do childcare? Well, I've been teaching, but I've never had to really formally teach children. So I said, with the help of my husband, he encouraged me. And I went into it and I called a few places. And at the end of three weeks, I got the job. Wow. So yeah, I can remember the, the, my, the first in, impression I had when I walked into the child care center. It was because they gave me a part-time for a study part-time job and I was to go in the afternoon. So I walked in during nap time and I saw all the babies asleep and I was like, this is magic. How did they do it? How did they do it? You know, I, I, I kept it to myself for a day, two days, but I thought that I couldn't keep it. I said, you need to tell me, how do how you, you do, do it? it? <laughs> so as time, you know, uh, went on, I day to day with my experience there, then I had to register in school. I did my CDA and all of that, and I fell in love with this job. I just love being with children. Mm -hmm. he, I couldn't, because even after that, I did my master's in early childhood education. Yep. Uh, I am I am qualified to teach in the public schools up to the third grade. Yep. But the love I have for caring for babies will not let me do that. I'm still with the children. Yeah. I just I just have a passion for it. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Yeah. And you can tell that because it's just the way you talk about it. It's such a passion for you. Now, I'm wondering, how was it that uh, I guess you started um, on the journey um, down that path, but also becoming a published author? What what inspired you to start writing in the midst of doing all this training and um, working with children? There mustn't have been much time. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, my writing started far back when I was in Nigeria. Um, I was about 19, 20 years old then. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I had I had some issues that were really um, disturbing me then. I was confused about certain things. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, um, some of them I couldn't share with uh, people around me. The little I could share, nobody really understood what I was going through. Mm -hmm. So when I find myself alone, I would take a pen and paper and I would write down poems, maybe articles, you know, just trying to uh, express myself. And then I, I started, you know, I changed it from expressing myself to like making what I was spelling into a story or a poem or something. And so when my friends would come around and they would read what I wrote, they would be like, are you sure you wrote this? I, was, I just wrote it, I did. So the more I wrote, the more the uh, inspiration came. Mm -hmm. So I bought me a big book. Uh, I graduated from just writing on scraps of papers and I write in the book and I write and write. And then from there, I write plays. Also because I had the background, I studied English. So it's, and I love literature so much. I will read, you know, many literary novels. Mm -hmm. yep. So I believe that helped too. So I will write plays. 
And from there, I had a little, uh, I had a small drama uh, group where we write plays, we will go and act it in churches, things like that. Fantastic. So I tried then to publish books, but I couldn't. It was, my mom tried to help me. You know, a lot of things happened. I couldn't, so I left it. And for some years, I wasn't writing. I went back to school then. I did my um, my bachelor's uh, degree and all of that. And then I got married. I moved back over here. I didn't bring any of those um, um, writings I had then with me. I right. just came. Writing was still in my mind, but I got busy. Like I told you, I got a job. <laughs> yes. So I, I started having children. I had the first one, second and third one came. <laughs> Family life, job, and all of that. But I, I changed my church. I, I joined the new church, the Redeemed Christian uh, Church of God, Christ Chapel. I still mm -hmm. attend the church up till today. So the pastor's wife announced that she was going to, she published a book and she was going to launch the book. Okay, so I attended the launching and I sat down there. I was watching the whole thing. It was like I was in a trance. And I was like, this is what I wanted to do all my life. And then she said, um, ask the next person beside you, what is your, what are your dreams or what is it you really wanted to do that you've not been able to do? So the next person to me asked me first, I said, exactly what she did what i'm looking at right now is what i've always wanted to do yeah so i promised myself that day that no matter how busy i was i would start writing trust me that night i started i didn't know what i would write a poem i would write i, I was just writing i was just writing so until i put myself together and i sat down and i wrote i wrote a few plays for the church and then i wrote the waiting room and because i promised myself i said i will no longer write and keep i will start to publish. i promised myself i promised yep. my god and ever since i've been writing and i've been published congratulations i know Long that story. oh absolutely <laughs> absolutely loving this call thank you very much adiola now i'm wondering you've um you've successfully published now authored and published um six books is that correct yes that's now correct. you you have a mixture of fiction and non-fiction adults and children's books is that correct uh i think they're all fiction mm -hmm. i have three fiction i have three children books uh one of the three uh fiction is a uh a collection of plays, two plays in one book. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, how long does it take for you to write a book generally? A couple of years, a couple of months, days? Uh, it depends on what I am writing and how much time I have to write. Mm. So um, with the with the waiting room, I created a routine for myself. I, I picked one day in the week. I picked a Thursday and I said every Thursday, I was going to write because when I when I'm writing, I have a theme in mind. So I already know, and um, I may not know where the story will end when I start, but I know the theme. I know what I'm writing about. Yeah. So I picked the first day, and every Thursday I would go there and add up to it, and then I edited it and all of that. So if if I count by weeks, only one day in maybe like two hours every Thursday I put into it. For that book, I think it took me about four about more or less four months yeah wow now for you, everything. you've mm -hmm. talked about themes tell us a little bit about how you come up with themes and and some of the themes you've used okay so i write literary fiction and with literary fiction it cuts across um walks of life so i i am someone who you know observes things in my environment mm -hmm. things that happen around me and a lot of them have caught my attention and those are the things that inspire me to write like i know i've mentioned church i'm a church person i'm a christian mm -hmm. so there are some things i see in um christianity that will catch my attention i'm also a family person there are things there are stories that i've heard there are things that happen in the society that have caught my attention like um, we talk about the things of love, we talk about um, greener pastures. Every day I see a lot of people striving to change um, their, their situation. They're trying to move to uh, a, a greener path in their lives. I have had different stories of um, love failing here mm -hmm. and there. Mm -hmm. I've heard stories of betrayal, 
you know, all of this, you know, inequality, uh, piety, all of that. I Lots see of topics. So, yes. So when I'm by myself, because a lot of times um, uh, I'm also a solitary learner. And uh, a lot of times when I'm by myself, I might be doing household chores. I might be, you know, in the kitchen cooking or doing other things. And because I'm by myself, my thoughts are coming. Things, these things are coming to my mind and I'm thinking about them, you know. So it gets to a point that I feel like I'm, 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 I'm bloated, like I'm, I'm <laughs> loaded with starting yep. things. Yep. And I'll be having that, I'll be longing for the time to sit and just pour all of them there. Yep. So wow. I believe I answered the question. Yeah, oh, look, that's fantastic feedback. I really appreciate spending some time talking with you about your journey. It's, it's amazing. Now, if we could go back, Adil, mm -hmm. I'd love to ask you about the feelings that you experienced when you finished, you actually finished your first book. Can you recall? Ah, uh, okay. Excitement or like, relief? It was mixed. First, I'm like, okay, finally I published a book. <laughs> Secondly, I'm like, who will read my book? Yes. And I'm like, I was, I didn't feel too excited to share it. Like, I didn't know what people would say about it. But um, my husband was, was the first person to read. He said, it's, it's a good story. You like it? Okay. So I, I shared with a few people around me too. I, then I saw more excitement with the people I shared it with than the excitement I had myself because I was like, okay, so they really like the story. Oh, okay. And then asking them for feedback encouraged me a lot. And then I got to a point to like, okay, is it because they're just trying to make me happy? Is that why they're saying this is good? Mm. Then I started introducing the book to people that didn't know me from nowhere, you know, and they would come back, give me positive feedback about the book. So that was when I really started appreciating, you know, the work that I, I did. So eventually, you know, I was, I was happy at first, but I was happier <laughs> as I got more reviews, you know, yeah. from, you know, from other people. Absolutely. So now, that's what that was the next um, where can people find these reviews? Are you on Goodreads? Where are you? Uh, I'm on Amazon. They can find some, most of the reviews on Amazon. Right. Fantastic. Now, I also looked uh, through your catalog uh, on the website that you'll share with us momentarily, but I love the artwork. Who does your artwork for you? The cover artwork? Oh, the cover. Okay. So at first I started, um, I started with Outskirt Press. Mm -hmm. So Outskirt Press did uh, The Waiting Room and Colors of Love. But the other four books I did myself. So I have um, one of my uh, nephews is into, um, uh, well, let me just, I, I, I think he's into printing, he's into mm -hmm. artworks. He yep. does a lot of artworks. So, he did some of them, some because it's not just the cover. When you all of my books have pictures inside of them, oh. even the no, yes, fantastic. The, it, a picture precedes the chapter. I am, I, I love images so much. You know, I'm. Uh, uh, so I will act. I will say, okay, can you give me something like this? And he would try his best to give me. And sometimes I do. I have um, a few people on Fiverr who are my people. Who there are you people. go to when I hit them. Yep. Yes, I call yeah. them not everybody. They I say they picture. say that a picture tells a, a, a thousand words, don't they? And it's very true if you've got the right pictures. Oh, thank you so much. Now I'm I'm wondering if we could um, pivot a little bit and talk about your latest book called "Let's Go Shopping." Tell us about that. Uh, okay, thank you. So with "Let's Go Shopping," I'm going to give you a story too how <laughs> um, <laughs> the inspiration came because I like sharing because it is it is a part of me it is what i experienced and mm -hmm. if i don't you know go deep down you may not really understand you know how the inspiration came so i took my older because i'm a child care provider so i took my older children like my um three or uh, three five in older children to uh on a field trip to a grocery store one year like that so we went to the grocery store and I saw the excitement. They were asking me, Miss Allah, what is this? What is that? And I was telling them, you know, and uh, I saw, we up to the point that we saw a live lobster. 
at the end of the trip, they gave us, you know, packages. Everybody went on with something to eat. So we, we were actually talking about eating healthy food, healthy snack, and all of that. It was a summer. It was in the summer of um, a year. I think it was 2000. Um, I think it was the year 2019, I think. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yes. So well, after we left, the feeling did not leave me. Because... You see, my experience with being with children leaves an impression in my, you know, in, in me, in my heart yes. for a long time. Yeah, stays Especially with you. Especially when I, yeah, when I see that I have impacted into them something and they're telling it back to me, that keeps me in a place where, you know, I keep thinking about it. So that day, that night, I couldn't go to sleep without putting some lines down. Yeah. And I actually wrote it like a poem and I left it like that. I didn't go back to it, but my mind was still going back to it, telling me I'm going to make a book out of that story. So after I think was it like a year or two, I went back to that um, little summary I had and I was working on it and I made it into a book. So the idea in, um, let's go shopping is to educate children and even families on how to pick healthy food on what to pick when you go to the store even though you want your cookies you want your ice cream you want you know the best of everything that you like those uh, snacks that takes taste really sweet okay how do you make a healthy meal so this is what we see the character in this book doing she went shopping with her mom she was excited. You know, children are excited about shopping. Yes. I've experienced it. <laughs> I myself, I know women are excited about shopping. So oh, as I mean. <laughs> the place. Yes. That's another thing about um my things. They are things I can, you know, that are really relatable. So the the excitement that I witnessed when I took them shopping and the excitement I had when I go shopping and even the excitement with my own biological children when it's time to go shopping, all of that helped me to be able to put, you know, the same excitement in the book. The child was excited to go with mom to the store to shop and her mom let her pick some of the things she wanted to pick. And as they go, you know, as they were going from aisle to aisle, the child was asking, mom, what is this? And she would explain what it is. So why she's explaining, we're talking about colors in the book. We are talking about shapes in the book because the fruits definitely have shapes. We are also talking about using your words, you know, because as children are growing, when, when they ask you question, you answer their question, you also ask them questions that they can extend, open-ended questions. Yes. So we are encouraging children to use more of their words. And we are also encouraging children to know more fruits and more vegetables. So when they go to the store, when they see some of these things, they can actually uh, name those foods, they can name the vegetables, and that is also adding to um, their vocabulary. Also, we see cooking in the book, teaching the child how to put some things together to make a meal. And also not just eating one thing or two things as a meal, having the full components of a real meal when you eat. All of these are in the book. Also, I would like to say that um, the book without pictures is excellent uh, nature all by itself, mm -hmm. but the pictures are even enhancing the words in the story, helping the story to even, you know, come out more uh, lively to the reader. So you read a page, you want to read what's next. So what did she do next? So what happened next? So also uh, I'm going to say that the book has large prints and having large prints is intentional because younger children need larger prints to optimize their reading performance. And even strugglers will achieve their uh, optimal reading rates because the text is larger than it would be expected, you know, for, for their grade or for their grade level, also for their chronological age. Yeah. So this is some of, um, you know, the things from the book. And also children, you can read the book to um, a newborn, like from three months all the way up to 10 year olds, you know, that, you know, the book is good for all of them. Children who can read by themselves can read 
the book fluently and children you can also use the book as a read aloud to children who are not ready to read yes wow there's so much in there that you know promotes a balanced sort of um, diet and just that education at an early age will help them set up uh, as they become young adults and on their own having to make these um, smart choices doesn't it mm, yes well yes, look um, all, all of that being said adiola i i know that there's a, a place where people can find your six books. Now, I'm wondering if you could share with people uh, where they can find um, all of these wonderful works. Okay, so you can find all of my books on any of your major online bookstore. It's on Amazon, it's on um, Barnes & Noble, it's on um, uh, many of those online. You can even find it on, on Walmart online, you can find it on Target online. Mm. You know, almost everywhere uh, online you'll find the books. And um, also you can find me on many of my social media handles and I can always direct you. I'm on Facebook as uh, Ola Books International. I'm on LinkedIn as Adiola Oyekola. I'm on Instagram as Adiola uh, underscore Oyekola. I'm also on Twitter as at Diola Crystal. So you can find me on any of those social media pages and you will definitely find links to my books on any of those uh, pages. Fantastic, Eliola. Thank you so very much for sharing. Now, for anybody who's on the call today, you're interested in this work and especially uh, Let's Go Shopping. There's a lot of value in there for your children um, to help them have a balanced approach to their diets. Um, I'll be making sure that the links below this post um, take you back to all of Adiola's wonderful works. And with that being said, Adiola, thank you so very much for joining me on the show today. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.